Because yeah. they said, no matter what, they're going to cheer you. I said, you give me a microphone, they won't, I promise. 100%. I know I mean, they won't. Slugs. Yeah. Underlings. <laughs> <laughs> I just like it. The Shug Shane Hollister. Logan Anaiken. Lyndon Ehlers. Wrestling with music and life for life. <laughs> Wrestling with music and life episode 24. My goodness. We are going up and up and up, and that is what we plan on fucking doing. Uh, on this one, Shuggy, because uh, we, this is something I, I wanted to talk about a lot more. And usually, uh, as I said, there is a crowd in the last one. Uh, it is because uh, we want to we want to also keep it to um, music. But uh, today it's just me and you, fella. And uh, we have a lot to say that we haven't really got to. And one of them is what we're almost getting to. I wanted to get to a lot more in the last episode because we had a, another pro wrestler for the first time. I shouldn't say that because Stevie Mo obviously has a lot to do with pro wrestling, but yeah. I don't think he's like, he's not an active wrestler, right? No, no, no. He's never wrestled or anything, okay. but he's commentated and he loves pro wrestling. Like he loves pro Gift wrestling. of gab. Yeah. That's good. Um, and for the viewers, check out um, Getting Strange with Stevie Mo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I almost fucked that up again, Stevie. Sorry. Uh, uh, so oh, shit. what I wanted to talk about though, uh, in, in, in the last episode, but I realized that it, it would have kind of not worked just because we haven't seen Dave for so long. Such a great dude. And we already, I already knew there was going to be some funny stories. That's probably one of the funniest episodes. Guys, check out the last episode with Dave. It was pretty great. I don't know why, but there was just, I was rolling. I think I his, editing, uh, his, non, his, like, his deliverance yeah, of stuff is delivery. fantastic. And he's not, he's not trying to be funny. It's just mm -hmm. Dave. And like his deliverance of stuff is it's fucking hilarious. Right, right. And it would have been good good to get his perspective on what I wanted to talk to you about, which is wrestling etiquette. Now oh, yeah. pro wrestling etiquette and professional musician etiquette is very similar. So that's why I think it's a good topic because I've kind of talked about it before where um as a young buck band, um, we kind of got mistreated by other ba bands because of the age factor. Like, these 16-year-olds, fucking idiots, what are they doing? And again, I don't know what it is, maybe because I went through that, but I figured they probably went through that. And this is what I'm getting at, is right now, if I played a show tomorrow, and I'm 35, right. I've seen 16-year-olds doing, like, arpeggios or trying to play uh, Testament or something. I'd be like, Fuck yeah, dude. See, that's, the, that's the but. difference between like when I, I mean, you act like, I mean, well, I can't say you act like, but we dealt with that shit too. Like right. I had to eat a lot of shit sandwiches, like coming in the business as young as I did. And as small as I was like, yeah, I mean, it's not like guys in, in the Indies were like jacked as fuck anyways. Um, but like that time I was super tiny, dude. I was 17 years old you know, wrestling for AEW when I was a fucking senior in high school. Like yeah. I had to deal with a lot of uh, that same shit. Like just, you know, again, that, that, yeah. that hazing, but later on in life, you know, Jimmy Jacobs walked up to me and was like, you know, if I didn't fuck with you at all, it meant I didn't even care about you or like you at all. Yeah, that wasn't, that you wasn't know, the case. But we're not with you guys, though. Yeah, they were but, like, Who are these guys are playing. But like, we didn't be like, we, uh, okay. But yeah. I still had that same shit. Like, I watched it happen to Colby and Nick. Colby yeah. and Nick getting propelled in the higher ranks of AEW when Danny took over the company and everyone who had worked there before watching their spot fucking dwindle. Yeah. And, like, I, they got fucking real butthurt about it. And we're like... We were kind of like, in a way, segregated from a lot of the locker room oh. because of like those guys who had been there for so long. Um, like Nick and Colby had fucking heat for really no reason. Well, there was reason for Colby sometimes because he, at one point, Colby was one of those guys who didn't know when to keep his mouth shut. It's funny how he mm -hmm. says that about Riddle now. But uh, oh, they've been doing great, man. Well, I, well, I like, mean, hey, Colbster, keep calling him a pea brain. That's something I like. Fucking hilarious. Like people call people pea brain. You have the size of a pea brain. That's amazing. <laughs> Good job, buddy. This week was fucking awesome, dude. Um, but I will say though, especially like because just going on the same thing, 
Um, what I was going to bring up first about the etiquette that I actually did like about pro wrestling is like, no matter who, and correct me if this is still happening, I hope it is, no matter who you are, you might get hazing, you know, during your time eventually. But one of the coolest things is all wrestlers have to shake each other's hands. Yes. And, and, and talk about that. Cause that's amazing. If I, um, I think bands should do that. I think they should show up, shake each other. And I, I think if you, to. I think if you just yeah. started doing it anyway, mm-hmm. like made it a thing that you did, I guarantee those bands would be like, well, that, that entire band walked up and introduced themselves to us. I think we did. Like, I think, uh, well, maybe not Derek, but I, I was always pretty like adamant about, especially this last few shows being older. I, I, I was adamant about walking up to people and just shaking their hand at, Everybody looks like they're in a band, though. And right. You know what I mean? Like, right. Like, ah. But I just shake people's hands anyway. And it was just like, hey, what's up, man? How you doing today? Cool. Enjoy the show. And and, and for pro wrestlers, it's like, how you doing, buddy? You probably hate each other, but you got to oh, There was times. Hand. Yeah, there was times you still have to do it. Yeah. Like, um, uh, it is, unfortunately, I don't know if it's not, like, a lot of new students don't do it. Oh, man. Which is disappointing. And I don't know... If it's because of all this COVID stuff or it's oh. not being, it's not being drilled into them that that's fucking important because it is back in the day, I was told, <laughs> but you're going to wrestle each other. Yeah. yeah. Really again, 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 okay. again, sweat yeah. on each other, drill yeah. all each other, whatever the fuck. But like, like, I guess back in the day when you would walk up to somebody, you introduce them first and last name shoot and yeah. then shake their hand. Which is not amazing. not just your first name, which is funny because when I do it now, people are probably like, "What a fucking douche!" Just to introduce himself as his work name. Like, no, that's my real first name, man. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, you still do it though, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I was doing it. It doesn't matter if they just began. That there were so many new I faces had. I met uh, Saturday for that company, uh, Chicago Style Wrestling. Yeah, lot, we'll get into that. Yeah, I was going to say though, like. You'd walk in, just hypothetically, just because yeah. I was talking about you, you walk in, you see a ref you know, you probably handshake them. Yeah, you do. Like, you hey, do. You brother, introduce. How you doing today? You know, introduce, it doesn't have in- to be like a long conversation. You just want to say, yeah. what's up, man? How you doing? Okay, we're going to have a good show. Cool. That's you, it. You, the, everyone, it, like, everyone who's a part of a fucking show that if you're there and you're helping, you are important. Right. To me. Like yeah. the referees are just as important as the wrestlers because if they fuck up, which I can go into a whole story about that. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about that. But like when they fuck up, yeah. it, it 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 can fuck up the whole match or the whole story or oh, the whole man, fucking been finish. So many good Dude, matches with refs. <laughs> I there one that happened yeah. for me this fucking weekend, man. Oh, just my God, fucking fitting. dude. All right, yeah, talk fuck. about your show, bud. Okay, How'd so uh What's awesome is like when you're only wrestling for SCW and then kind of coming back to AEW, you see, especially in AEW, I see the top notch fucking like indie darlings right now, really. Like nice. they're the guys taking the fuck off. So, and there's just really, some of them are just really fucking good workers. Yeah. Like not just guys who do a bunch of cool shit, but there are guys out there that are like who are just fucking awesome to watch. And I believe everything they're fucking doing oh, yeah. and it's like fucking cool. But then like you kind of get to like, it's like, it's like SEW and a W meet. And it's kind of like Chicago style wrestling. There's a lot. It seems like a lot of green people there, Yeah, which is not a knock on anybody, but like, then there's, you know, guys I've known for fucking years, haven't been in the ring with in fucking years. And it felt like putting on, an old pair of wrestling boots and like, man, oh, they yeah. still fucking fit. Nice. And like me and Nick Brubaker, like, cause they had to introduce me to replace Conan Lycan. It wasn't at the show. Cause Conan was busting his ass for AEW trying to get that job, bro. Oh, trying yeah. to get the contract. Oh, yeah. He's a big so, boy. Too. Yeah. I, he's, mean, I, and he, I fully believe by his look in general, I, I he just looks like he's going to be on that show. I, I, I don't know dude, what it is. He's, man. And he's a fucking athlete. He played D one right. football, man. Oh, yeah, he's a fucking that's, linebacker. That's what it is. Yeah. Like <laughs> it's, and he can do flips, dude. He can do right. all the cool shit that Colby can, but he's bigger. He's fucking, right. you know, Colby. What was it? Conan told me that Colby was like, he's like, I'm glad you're wrestling without your shirt on. You look like a fucking house. I was <laughs> like, hell yeah, dude. Well, I will say that, uh, Kevin Owens had one of the best promos ever. Uh, Probably got unleashed, thanks fuck by uh, Triple H. But um, he he basically put it in a great way. 
you can look like a million bucks and you can be this star athlete, but you're never going to be me because I'm going to be here forever. You're just going to be here for a little bit. Uh, fuck. It was Austin Theory. Austin Theory. Yeah. And that promo was really, really true to what you just said. And I'm no knock on Conan. I think he's different. I think he's tough. I think he's, you know, he, he's different. Yeah. But like, you can look like a billion dollars. And guess what, dude? If you don't really not, love the business, yeah. the business ain't going to shit. Well, it's going to shit you that's out. Exactly, dude. A lot of people, especially back in the day, and they tried to do this again. Mm-hmm. If you haven't noticed, like the, the NXT, when it was rebranded and done again, yeah. they were signing former athletes all over again. They didn't want indie They're wrestlers anymore. Right now. I know, but still Triple yeah. H is smart enough to know that there are indies that guys who are fucking top notch guys for a reason right, he can right. pick and grab. And, and, so, and even to have like, probably there's going to be, I bet you, I bet you, I'm going to put this out of the universe, a call. Hey, Suge, dark match. Uh, that would be fucking fantastic. Don't get me wrong. Because Triple H is going to go, you did great in that elevator scene, man. I, I need you. Yeah, right. <laughs> he fucking remembered me. Hey, the I was just. Ran out, he was good. The I'm whole time I was starstruck as fuck kind of too. Like, like Randy Orton yeah, was like, I told be. that whole story, but yeah. You yeah. But like, like, yeah, go ahead with the uh, etiquette. Cause I, I, I do want to know more about like, uh, you, you've just, we've talked about like just even SEW. It doesn't right. matter if it's just SEW. You still do it. Yeah. You walk up and fucking shake hands or even if some, if, if you know, you know, you're closer with certain people, you give them a hug. You know what I mean? It happens. Right. And go on with the show. Cause but I, like, I want to know about that. Show. Okay. So Chicago style wrestling, I was going to be brought in as a mouthpiece, actually as a manager, yeah. because I want to focus more on cutting promos anyways. Talk a little bit more about that company. Cause I don't think I've heard of them. Uh, Chicago style wrestling is kind of like, um, you know, like obviously a little Chicago show, but they have a really good fucking following and they have a fucking good crowd. Or they've been around. I, I actually would have to ask Jason oh, okay. Hades. Yeah. Because me and Jason Hades were fucking breaking in around the same time and worked in each other, work with each other in IWA and Dreamwave mm-hmm. and, you know, we were all boys with Prince Mustafa Ali who's on TV now. Like, yeah, like we were all in like, we were all boys, like the same time, same area. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah. So like, um, I hit up Hades was cause I was talking to Conan and I was talking to Tupu and Jay Marsden and Shane Boucher. They're all like a click. Yeah. The BXB, which is the black and the brave, okay. uh, like, you know, like army yeah. or whatever. And I told him, uh, I said something funny over the weekend. I was like, we got to change the fucking name. Cause I ain't a part of the school, man. Right. I was the first two classes, but, uh, anyways, here or there, um, I was going to come in anyways as a mouthpiece and, uh, yeah. Hades hit me up and was like, dude, Conan can't be at the show. Do you think you could replace him as the wrestler in the show? I said, all right, that's fine. Yeah. And we do my promo, but the bad thing is the promo wasn't aired in front of the crowd. It was only put on Twitter. So like people didn't have enough time to, well, who the fuck is Shane Hollister? So I got a lot of that chant for the first time since I was super fucking green. (laughs) Who are you? Who are you? And I looked at one dude and I said, Google me, bitch. Nice. (laughs) And like this company, apparently you get away with throwing the F bomb around. So I hadn't, and I hadn't worked heel in so fucking long. It felt like, oh my God, I love doing, I miss dude, this yes. so fucking much. Call them slugs. Oh please. my God, dude. I like, at one point, like, cause I was wearing my, funny thing is nobody pointed out that it was Thor's fucking vest from the new movie. They just kept saying Michael Jackson. I was like, Michael Jackson had a full fucking, it was long sleeve <laughs> fucking, not a vest, motherfucker. I no either, so I'm glad. But like, they're, they're like but, me. But they're like, know. they're just chanting Michael Jackson. Yeah. And like, I took it off at one point and then I got, they like, I got heat they're like, or they thought they won up me because I yeah. took it off. I was like, realistically, I'm taking away your ammunition, motherfucker. Are you not doing the mask? For, for no, them? I take the mask off when oh, I get I in the did, ring. It, for some reason, I, I, I don't know why I was like, is he not wearing the mask for this? Cause you might not for other organizations. No, I wear that mask everywhere I fucking okay, go. Okay, okay. So but like, they were chanting that when the mask? No. Uh, when the mask came on and I have my badass Mad Max jacket that has the fucking spikes and everything sticking out of it. It went over? Like, they, they looked at me, they're like, who the fuck is that guy at right, first? Right. You know what I mean? I, I grabbed him initially. Mm-hmm. and But then I had to work. Like I was new again because they didn't know who the fuck I was. Which you probably kind of liked. I did. Yeah, give you that. I did, fire. but I also broke character okay. because there was a couple that literally 
have been watching me wrestle since I was 17 fucking years old wow. in AAW were sitting in front row at the Chicago Star Wrestling. And they said, hey, Shane, and I broke and I shook their hands and I was like, hey, I'm breaking character right now. I don't give a fuck. And I said that out loud to the crowd and I only slapped those two people's hands. Yeah. That's it. Wow. And I was like, because that dude, that's that's fucking awesome that they these two people that are in love and I've, they love wrestling so fucking much. Yeah. They still come to the Chicago Chicago area wrestling, and it's so fucking cool that they basically have watched me grow up in the business. So that's fucking cool, man. Love is finding something in common that you both love, yeah, and sharing that love. And and, and that's you know again, no offense to a lot of people out there that don't have that. Not saying that you can't have love without that. I don't. Right, right, there's right. no one for anything. Doesn't matter what it is, but uh, that is awesome, and it was really cool that you've shared that moment. Hopefully, that was on uh, at least a fucking picture or something. I'm sure. I'm sure it ended up on video, and I'm sure Hades would understand because, like, I mean, it's his show, yeah, and like he would understand. So, um, anyways, getting back to the match, I've known CJ Sparja, uh, uh, Nick Brubaker, and Marche Rocket for years. I have worked with those, those guys. Some really cool ass names. I've worked. Well, I'm pretty sure that. CJ Sparza is his real fucking name. Oh, really? And I think Nick Brubaker is his real name. Motherfucker, <laughs> you, you better be brewing me some fucking bacon cookies, bitch. But uh, love it. Uh, so I. Funny thing is, when the first one I saw was Marche when I was saying hi to everybody, and I he was like. He fucking he was like motherfucker, and then he called me. A, he called me something else that only he can say, and I can't say. So, oh, <laughs> yeah. uh, let me guess. Uh, you know, uh, you know what it is. Yeah. So, uh, he's like, man, oh, I thought it, it was Nutella. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was like, I thought that was a motherfucking joke when I saw you on the fly. I was like, what the fuck? I was like dying. That's I was funny. like, I'm glad nothing's changed with Marche. He's still one of the biggest fucking human beings in the locker room, too, man. He's like 6'5". Yeah. And he's, dude, he's fucking big ass, dude. Right. But like, maybe he's even 6'6". Six, six. He's a big guy. So anyways, yeah, me and Marche. still susceptible to an eye rake. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Guess what? That's how I got that motherfucker and got into my spot. Oh, I got an eye rake in because I blinded him. But we'll yeah. get to it anyways. Yeah. But I had to prove myself to these people. I mean, there were select few people that I knew. Even the boy, some of the boys in the back, like the young kids. One of them asked me, "Hey, man, can you take a picture for me?" Oh. And wow. then Theseus is one of the students from Black and the Brave. He looks at me like this motherfucker doesn't know who you are. <laughs> Theseus? Theseus, yes. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. That's, like, yeah. Uh, is that his real name? Yeah, I'm pretty sure, yes. Oh, my God. I, yes, it is. It is Bro, Theseus. Bro, use yeah. that, Theseus. He does. Okay. He does. But uh, he's standing there, and I remember in my head, I just smiled anyways, and I smiled I, for real, because this kid was only doing the Battle Royal, which is all only guys trying to get into the company. Right. So he asked me, of all these people who are standing around in Theseus's face, I wish I would have took a picture of Theseus's face. Like, like literally, it was like, dude doesn't know who the fuck you are, man. I <laughs> fucking should what? <laughs> but like the, the dude didn't. Uh, it's okay. But it's our, but again, one of the young guys. Yeah. Uh. Anyways, I'm jumping ahead. We go into the match, and we're it's a gauntlet style match, but it's lumberjacks. So yeah. once you are eliminated, you have to leave. Oh, so everybody's out there at once, but you're outside the ring. I mean, you know what I mean? So, yeah. uh, it got, uh, everything was, dude, when we were putting it together, I was like, man, this feels like it's just going to be a kumumble fuck. Yeah. And then when we went out there, the opposite, like mm. it just clicked stuff was happening. It was working. Nice. I was like, fuck yeah. All right. And then when I got in there to wrestle Brubaker, it was like, again, it was like, they, they didn't know who the fuck I was. And I, I thought it was great. I was like, okay, this is great. I am about to beat two of your guys that you love the most back to back, and you don't see it fucking coming. Well, you're playing heel, though. Yeah. Too, so oh, that's yeah. It's even better. Well, I fucking beat Brubaker straight yeah. up. Like, okay. I didn't cheat. Nice. So, um, but me and Brubaker were throwing fucking haymakers because we're boys. Yeah. You know, work snug. You know, Benoit. So you're feeling pretty good today? Oh, no, I'm fine. I'm oh, fine. Okay. Well, Actually, yeah, nothing fucking hurt. Mm. I thought the power bomb in the apron was gonna fucking hurt. That didn't hurt. Oh, okay. But yeah, well, 
anyways, we'll get to it. Anyways, yeah. we're killing our match. Me and like me and Brew Baker. Brew Baker's in a crazy amount of pain because mm-hmm. he had uh, literally fucking. He said he would bend over, was like drying off his legs, and stood up and literally had to lay down because he fucking pulled something Ooh. in his back. And I'm like, dude, if you if we go out there and you're hurt, we'll audible. I'll roll you up. I'll right, hook your right. fucking tights. Right. You know what I mean? Whatever. So what's, what's his thing? age? Is he Brew Baker's? Brew Baker's maybe a year or two younger than me, but oh, he's okay. close. You know. Yeah. Uh, Brew Baker looks fucking cool as shit. By the way, the guy's like, <sighs> he's got like uh, that old school. Phil Anselmo, like, undercut, but it's yeah. blonde. And then he's got tattoos on his neck that go up from his shoulder with his, like, like sleeve. And it wraps up on his head. Yeah. It lo- he looks cool as fuck. Like, it Brew Baker. Like bacon Brew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, anyways, I, I was just amazed the fact that with this, with, like, he had to take, like, a nerve relaxer or something like that. Oh, I was like, shit. dude, can you even function? He was like, dude, yeah, I'm all right. And we, like, called it a few times. Nothing got botched. It was, it was, everything was fucking on. Well, his nerves were relaxed. Yeah, right. Fuck. So, like, everything was there. Uh, so this is where the ref thing happened. Yeah. I was and, uh, to see what that so was. So when I hit, we're going into finish, I hit Brew Baker with the buzzsaw kick cover ref goes one two three oh no a yeah hesitation. And, oh yeah and the crowd was confused as fuck and like brew baker was the one who was gonna fucking did the ref not know that that was the finish his check this shit out the referee yeah. thought it was gonna come down to Marche and brew baker and in my head i'm like they're on the same fucking team how would that work oh yeah yeah <laughs> so his explanation of why he fucked up made no sense either but I was mm. like at this point Brubaker was fucking mad he made him come back after I was changing after the show was over anyways I'm jumping the gun but he came back and apologized to me and sat next to me and talked to me for like five minutes I was like buddy you're not the first one to fucking do this to me I mean, it's happened I, to I, me I, I, he's I don't, it's okay yeah you know and it, I, the, the story ended up being told with me and Marche anyways Mm. because we went out there and Marche has the hardest, loudest chops you'll ever hear in your entire fucking life. And that's oh, wow. no joke. Yeah. And I was lucky enough that I still wear like a sauna vest or I have my vest on most of the time. Um, that when he Until chops, you get too jacked and you're like, okay, yeah, vest yeah, off. yeah for sure. <laughs> but like, even with all that on, when he throws yeah. one, it echoes through a fucking place yeah. and it always has. So anyways, I do my stick at one point, He's chopping me, he's chopping me, it's over as fuck. The crowd's like, one more time. And I'm I'm old school heel, like, not just taking that chop and selling off. I'm bumping yeah. every time he fucking hits me. Yeah. So send me off. I hold on the ropes, low bridge him, because I'm like, fuck, you're bigger than me. I ain't going to try to fucking stand toe-to-toe with you no more. Right. Low bridge, hit the ropes, go for the suicide. He fucking catches me like this, puts me on my feet, kicks me in the gut, Picks me up for a power bomb. We're not all the way there. I kind of like sometimes when the power bomb gets that stall of like, oh, I didn't know, oh, yeah. I didn't get you all the way up right away. And then when he did, we both went together. And right when I got there, it was fast and it was Ooh. on the apron. Nice. And like the crowd was like, Ooh. I was like, oh yeah, we got him. I was like in my head, I was like, oh, this is gonna hurt. This is gonna hurt. This is gonna hurt. Oh fuck, that was fine. Right. Like literally, I was like, this is gonna suck. Um. Throws me in, gets a false out of it as a natural heel. I'm just like, fuck this. I'm going to roll out again. I roll off to the other side. Exactly. We lead to a spot where he goes to put me up on his shoulder. He's going to fucking run me towards the post. I'm behind, push him into the post. Yep. And I'm like rolling the ring. And again, the referee is not smartened up because he is not thinking. I said, count that motherfucker out. And he goes, it's a gauntlet match. It's a lumberjack match. I said, where the fuck are the lumberjacks? <laughs> so he starts counting nice and that as a heel i'm like yeah dude fuck him i'm gonna breathe he's fucking selling the fuck out of his shoulder he gets back in the ring i shotgun drop kick him into the corner nice. so i'm working him in the corner leading to our uh what was it our next spot which was uh it was into the irex spot i believe so yeah he uh we're working 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 and at that point Everyone thinks that you have to do this during falsies. Yeah. Ah, fuck that. I just stomp him, 
stomp him down till he's laying down and I just stand on his fucking face and I look at that guy who asked me who I was and said Google me bitch Google me <laughs> The Google app. Yeah. Like the Google note. And then like, I fucking, I was like, again, this is a great time. I finally have this guy who's fucking way bigger than me down. I'm going to stand on his fucking head. Right. I'm going to get heat. Yeah. I haven't been able to do that. You don't understand how long it's fucking been, dude, for me. I mean, I understand because I believe you're a natural heel. Yes. And me uh, just, you know, wanting to be able to. Throw some tags to you. They're all <laughs> heel tags, according to you. Right. But then I watch wrestling that at the highest of levels, WWE. Yeah. And guess what? Uh, Culpster's a heel and a face at the same time. Yeah. I mean, he's getting well, that. Let me just say this. He's just over whatever yeah. he's doing. It's over his shit. Well, right that's, now. hey, that's the yeah. reason that um, Merrick Brave and Crotch, when Crotch was a part of the booking, yeah. Refused to turn me heel. For SEW. Yeah. They refused yeah. to turn me heel here. Because yeah. they said, no matter what, they're going to cheer you. I said, you give me a microphone, they won't. I promise. 100%. I, I know mean, they won't. Slugs. Yeah. Underlings. <laughs> <laughs> I just like it. It's, it's more to my style to right. want to uh, shit on people. And, and, and for me, and, and especially you, uh, the fucking wrestling we watched that we grew up on I was doing a, a like a montage thing of The Rock of his best moments. Yeah, and there's like somebody put like everything up, and it's like forty thousand seasons. <laughs> Fuck, and they're only like five minutes long. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And they start with The Rock's old theme, and it just pumps you up every time because oh. you smell what The Rock is cooking. Oh yeah, dude, it's it's fucking great. Anyway, and and he just fucking talks shit the whole time, but it's not. I mean, what you start to notice is he's got a bunch of players around him that are just as good. Oh, yeah. They know how to sell his shit talking. Oh, yeah. Or they talk shit, too. And he's just better, you know? And, oh, and again, yeah. it, he had a guy writing his shit talking. And I forget his name. It's like one of his good buddies still writes for him, by the way, right. even for movies. But I guess what I'm saying is, is our most of our ideas are what we've come up with uh, musically, the Shug Project is very heelish. Oh, fucking for sure, dude. But I try. Well, right know, now, yeah, right now it would yeah. definitely get heat. Mm. I don't. Maybe not. I, I think the I don't new, know. The new song would probably get heat because it's kind of like hokey. Yeah, and that, the hokey heat's also funny. Oh yeah, but, for sure. Uh, I I think a lot of people would be into it to be like, oh wait, no, he's basically saying he's you know he's. And coming. again, if I present myself. On stage, yeah, acting a certain way, they're like, "Okay, this is a show." Right. And it, if 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 they thought I was, if I went up on stage in regular fucking clothes and did stuff like that, they're like, mm -hmm. "That guy's just a piece of shit." <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> so, anyways, yeah, back, to, go the back match. to the match. All right, we lead to a spot where I like to do this thing, and it's different. Even as a babyface, you can do it, uh, but when I do it as a heel. Marche had picked me up, put me on top, like set me up for a, a, a second race, a second rope suplex. So what I do is we're fighting, we're fighting, and gut him, gut him, gut him, and I pull his head back, and I put my fingers like it looks like I put my finger inside of his eyeball, and I fucking went like this, and then I slipped to the apron to his yeah. right side, and I pulled his right foot. Okay. So that he's sitting down, sitting with his crotch, and his legs spread on the middle rope. Oh. Inziguri to the face. Bang. Wow, oh, shit. Up top. He's hanging on. Double stomp from the top rope while he's hanging on. Nice. Boom. And ended up, and it ended up be, becoming a top rope bonsai drop because I end up fucking sitting on him, which wasn't the fucking plan, but I'm sure it looked, everyone said it looked fucking gross. Oh, nice. So, like, it looked like I stomped him and then fucking sat on him when we landed. Nice. Covered him. Big falsy. But I did. It's been so long to even pretend that I put my finger in somebody's eye and fucking rake it. That it was like, what are you going to do? This guy's 6'5". In a real right, fight, right. I'm going to poke you in the fucking eye. Oh, yeah. In a street fight, I'm poking you in the eye. All right? Even if you, what was it, that line from The Mask? And he's getting his ass kicked. He goes, enjoy your victory with one eye. And he oh, pokes yeah. him right in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Jim Carrey is amazing. He's great. So anyways, leading to the finish, 
Um, I audible the spot because I was like, all right, we're running over time. We were going to run in a whole nother spot where, because Marche is so fucking strong. Oh, ah, uh, all right. Sorry. Shit. I jumped the gun. I couldn't remember how we got to that corner spot. Marche was like, hey, go for the tornado DT. I'm going to throw you off. And dude, I was blown up. Yeah. So I run up the ropes and I, I'm sandbagging this motherfucker. I'm Uh-oh. like, damn, dude, he's going to have to throw me. Yeah. And when he threw me, I was like, I was like, yeah, I'm not going to go very high. That motherfucker almost launched me to the other side of the fucking ring. <laughs> and like when I was coming down, it was this badass like face bump that I, and I was, and I sold it like, you know, and then he is a big ass dude. And when he leaves his feet for his drop kick, it looks fucking awesome. Mm. And that was his drop kick to get me to the corner for that spot that we just talked about. Yeah. So anyways, leading to the go home, I go up top. And I jump off top and he's so fucking strong and I'm coming at him and like, it's like caught power slam, huge pop. Nice. And the boys from the back come back out to save the Suge. Oh. Each one gets hit. Each one gets hit. One comes in the ring, gets thrown over the top rope. The other one, Shane Boucher jumps off the top rope. Marche's finish is the diamond cutter or the, you know, RKO. So he jumps off the top. Catches him in it, huge fucking pop, rolls out of the ring, referee's distracted by Tupu. Marche goes for the fucking cutter on me, I push him off the ropes, kick him right in the fucking dick. Nice. He falls to his knees, referee turns around, buzzsaw, cover, crowd, like, Mm. one, two, three, and the crowd was like, holy shit, Marche just got fucking beat, even though we cheated. Yeah. First night in, I just beat two of your fucking guys in a row. Yeah. Sick the dick kid. Yeah, motherfucker. So anyways, <laughs> we had another spot later on in the night. Um, anyways, that referee talking to me, I had to put, I was changing a little bit because I was like, I do have to go back out there. Fuck. Um, so we do this other spot for the main event. And like somebody had said something in the back. They were like, dude, you were getting that, you know, Michael Jackson chant. And I was like, you know what I should have done? I should have started doing the fucking dance from like beat it. <laughs> and they're like, dude, do it. And then when I ran in the ring and they started chanting again, I was like, right. I did the fucking dance. I was like, you know what? I'm going to run with it. Fuck you guys. You're not going to get the best of me. <laughs> and then now you motherfuckers are going to leave. When I say Google me, you're going to jump on there and see who the fuck I've worked with and know that the Shook is the fucking man. The Shook is here. I love so, it. Anyways, it was fucking great. It was fun and getting to uh, see a bunch of my fucking buddies I ain't seen in years. All right. It was fucking great. And then meet a bunch of like, again, to that story where this guy has this, uh, it's almost like the abyss and he's as big as him. He's a big ass fucking dude in the locker room. He's got longer hair. Um, he tells me a story when he was coming to AAW shows with his dad. Yeah. And he remembered stuff about when I was in a tag team, which is like my, my first like real thing I was actually ever doing in AEW as a, a right. tag champion and shit. And he remembered this stuff. And I was like, holy shit, dude, that, I don't even remember that, but that's crazy. Cause he, he sparked something in my head. I didn't fucking remember. Right. And I was like, he was like, Hey man, that's just really nice to meet you, man. Like that, like going to those shows with my dad, like it made me want to be a wrestler. And I'm like, right. that shit fucking like, if you meet somebody who used to come to shows when you're playing shows, they were like, well, that made me want to be a vocalist. Oh yeah, I'd, I'd love that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like that. Those kind of feelings are like like you kind of don't understand how shitty I was. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I when I was in that tag team with Bryce Benjamin, I was not very fucking good. So, but again, like uh, it's just crazy when you meet people like that and like those things. Like that's that whole show was fun. I got. I mean, like I said, like a lot of young people, or even some that are doing really well, like yeah. Sky Blue she has a contract with AEW and still does like the Chicago land area shows. Right. So, um, she, she didn't know really who I was. I mean, realistically, besides doing the AEW stuff and seeing my banner yeah. at those AEW shows, she doesn't know who I am. I mean, we had spoken a little bit, but like, uh, I was telling stories about how she had, she had ordered, this story is crazy. She had ordered four bottles of sugar glass that looked like real glass bottles. Oh. And one of them, she said, apparently her, I think she said it was her mom or her dad got the box and opened it. It was, she was like, was one of these supposed to be broke? <laughs> and she was, apparently she was fucking pissed cause she wasn't home. Right. So 
Uh, anyways, if you're not smartened up, uh, glass bottles and pro wrestling, if somebody's actually using a real one, it ain't going to fucking break when you hit somebody in the head. I'm going to tell you that right now. Uh, uh, if you did, and it really did. Break. Oh, it would fucking kill that yeah, guy. Damn. That guy's dead. Yeah. But anyways, I was talking to her. There might be assholes out there doing that. Though. I don't know, so, Matt. I, I don't Again, know. people are starting to use gusset plates that I am around all the time in buildings. Like those plates that help hold wood together. Yeah. And they have these long ass spikes in them. They're using those in death matches right now. Oh my God. Well, yeah. If you really want to kill yourself, uh, just go to Switzerland. They have uh, <laughs> suicide pods now. <laughs> Idiots. Anyway, continue. Oh, apparently those people are... I... Suicide... <laughs> Deathmatch wrestlers can make a lot of fucking money and do right, more than right, I've right. ever done. And yeah. I'm wearing one of his hats right now. His birthday was yesterday. Marcus Crane got farther oh, than yeah. I ever Rest did in fucking pro right. wrestling. Yeah. And he did deathmatch, man. And But he did it. It wasn't. It didn't seem like you were watching back at wrestling because he built a story with. Because yeah. that's the good deathmatch wrestlers. To, maybe that's. And I, I don't want to say this because maybe it's like. I'm not a guy who builds matches. Maybe that would be harder than. Yeah, because yeah. you have everything in your aspect of like, I could just throw caution in the wind and I could just grab this and hit you right, whenever right, the fuck right. I want. But you want to, it being smart enough to build with all the stuff around you. I mean, like Mick Foley, but Terry that's Falk. What I was going to say, maybe that's why I like Mick Foley so much. Right. It's because he literally built a story when he was doing like Japanese wrestling with yeah. Terry Funk uh, about the ropes that were literally barbed wire, yeah. children. Uh, and a lot of people might, they don't know that. Or they had like the explosive bomb matches where C4, like. C4, which yeah. wasn't necessarily. C4, uh, but. It's not going to actually kill you, but it's probably a pyrotechnic that's going to burn you. It'll fucking hurt. Yeah. That's for sure. Right. But like, again, like. I digress. Um, anyways, back to <laughs> Sky Blue. I mean, like yeah. deathmatch wrestling and stuff like that. Yes, there are like some real. The light tubes are fucking real. I can't. That's. You can't fake that. But like a glass bottle is is mostly sugar glass. But I also was telling the story, but that sugar glass, when you roll in it, it goes still, even though it's sugar glass, it'll cut you. Right. It'll still cut you. It won't cut you like regular glass, but it can. Um, anyways, I was talking to Sky Blue and I was telling a, a story of the first time I ever came across one was with Eric Cannon. And she was like, you, you know, Eric Cannon. And I was like, I don't think you know how long I've been in this business. Right. Me and Eric Cannon, my first main event match as a singles wrestler was against Eric Cannon in AEW. And we used one of those and Eric Cannon had taken just, just slowly. You know how hard it is to take off the fucking sticky thing of a glass bottle and not leave all the residue and everything stay on it. He peeled off like a Bud Light to put it on the sugar glass bottle to make it look legit. Smart. Yeah. So it, that's it. That, again, you just gotta be patient with shit like that. Right. So anyways, um, do you know Eric Cannon? I'm the one that taught him how to drink PBR. Yeah, it? fuck, right? <laughs> Shit. Anyways, <laughs> I could fucking talk about Eric Cannon all day, but... Uh, yeah. Good dude. And we, I will talk about him because of what he did the weekend before, because he just made fucking history. Oh, so, shit. Um, anyways, yeah. tell the story about Eric Cannon to Sky Blue, and she was like... She was like, wait, you know Eric Cannon? I was like, yes. I mean, Cannon, without Cannon, I wouldn't probably wouldn't have been... As good of a singles wrestler, because I tell this story all the time. I was like, you go into matches, yes, you can have a go out and have a good match, but if you go into a program, that's what will separate you from a wrestler to a worker because you have to top everything you've done before to captivate people to keep coming to watch it. Right. So, anyways, uh, and then I tell the story of like, you know who was in the front row for that? And she was like, no. I was like, Scarlett Bardot. That match made her wanted to be in pro wrestling. And look, now she's on TV with her now husband, Carrying yeah, Cross. Carrying somebody's cross, whatever. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no offense, I just wanted to do the pun. That's funny. One, and that's a pun for even. Go ahead, brother. But, anyways, like, I mean, I don't, I, 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 again, a lot of these young people may not know. I mean, again, there. Uh, don't get me wrong. There was people in that crowd or people in the back who knew who I was, and some who didn't. They were yeah. newer. Um, I mean, Vic Capri is still working, and Colby. Me and Colby were watching Vic Capri, and even you. Did you go to the RCW shows? That sounds really familiar. I don't know that I did. Um, Vic Capri does not sound familiar. Like the La LaSalle area? Yeah, I definitely went to the LaSalle stuff. Yeah, dude. When he wrestled remember. Raven. 
No. No, you don't remember that yeah, one? I don't know. Yeah. Vic Capri is still jacked as fuck to this day, still working. Mm. Um, Vic, uh, again, he made me, he kind of flattered me in the locker room with like a lot of these young people who don't know who the fuck I am. Vic was like, you, that's the Shug. You guys don't know who he is. And I'm hearing him. <laughs> exactly. And he's fucking putting me over like a motherfucker, which made me feel so good. And I think like the more and more that these people that were in the back in the crowd that was out there, they're going to walk away going, Oh, who the fuck was Shane Hollister? And like, what the yeah. fuck has he done? And it's, it's again, that also creates more of a nostalgia f- for those people who are going to make, wow, this guy's done a lot more than I fucking realized when I was asking him, who are you during the fucking show? Like little do they know I've worked with, I've beaten or worked with, a lot of guys who are WWE Universal Champion. So, and and again, you know, this is like the millionth time I've said this, and I'll keep saying it. The boat has not left for no, you, brother. No, no, no. Uh, the WWE now is completely changed. We know that. We just know that. I, I'm seeing it in the program. I actually kind of want to check it out now. I think most people. And again, I still check it out. No offense. I I, I don't want to say that. I'm just casual. And, it, it, and, but it does to me. Yeah. Uh, after not watching the product for so long, that it makes me like, wow, dude, I really want to start watching it. Like, I want to. I want to. I want to know what the fuck's going on. So, like, well, when I it gets to, I think they're gonna think outside of what has been happening. And uh, no offense to Vince McMahon, he's the greatest. Of all time, I don't care what anybody says, they don't understand how much it takes to make something like that, and they don't understand how much it takes to continue something like that. And again, business acuum is a real saying. That guy has it, and he's always had it, and now he's not there anymore. And I guess my point, uh, he'll still be there in a way, I I guarantee it. If, uh, you know, his family's still there, he's going to have word or two. I think there's... Uh, there's also a rumor of him being inducted to the WWE Hall of Fame this year. Yeah. So, which, um, I mean, why the fuck not, right? Well, I, I, I would just continue to say that he is the WWE, though. You know? Right. Um, but, again, I, I'm not there. I, it doesn't matter. Uh, I just look at it and I say, um, maybe the straps that were there before for some won't be there as much. And they'll fall on their face if they suck. Right. Or real. Yeah, because you have to get in the ring with people who can actually fucking work. When you take away the creativity of the creative. Right. Things get worse. If you go to a show and they say, hey, you're Shug, Shane Hollister. Uh, We know you, uh, blah, blah, blah. Especially Booker, you know already that that the last show. Um, I'm not going to listen to any of your ideas for this match. You're going to be like... Uh, okay, that's weird. Uh, if they just they didn't do this, I'm just being hypothetical. Oh yeah, no. But if they did, you'd be like, oh, okay. So you own this whole fucking thing. I get it. I get it. I get it. Uh, what do you? Whatever you want to do, you'd be respectful. But you, in your mind, you'd be like, dude, I can literally give also you badass ideas, bro. Hang on. Yeah. In this company, they still have guys agent matches, and Vic was our agent, and he there were certain things he wanted. So but explain he, that a little bit. So viewers. like. He wouldn't like all right. So an agent of a match, which is very rare for um, a lot of independent companies, yeah. which I love to do uh, personally. If I actually just stopped wrestling, I would love to be an agent for people people's matches because I I, I feel like as an artist, I can paint a really good fucking picture with other people's so to ideas. Me, an agent means producer. Yes, like, you, yes, producer. Yes, an agent. Or, yeah. They also call them producers as well. Okay. So like. Uh, Again, like a producer will take what you've done and maybe change it a little bit and make it bigger or better and brighter. Yeah. So like that's what an agent can do. But it's funny because with Vic, he saw me and Marche and Brubaker stuff and he goes, I don't have to worry about you guys. Right. And like he was like, he was like, oh, you're fine. And I was like, I already had the finished call to my head and it was going to go over yeah. and he was like yes that's fucking great it's fucking perfect nobody's doing a low blow in the fucking whole show i was like yeah perfect right my first night in the fucking company i beat two guys who've been here fucking since day one and i'm being this is my introduction to the company i have to have some kind of big boom right so and yeah vic was like oh yeah i don't i don't have to even be well, a part of that that's what we're getting at is that there's there's 
uh, especially with the agent term is for sure for WWE, like agents. They have always, them. Yes. You know, there uh, are guys who still have jobs. Yeah. That, that, that's what they're, they do that. They, I seen that, um, uh, road dog yeah. got rehired. Yes, back. he did. Yes, he did. Uh, and by should, the way, by like, the way, he should have never been let go because if anybody has gotten away with it, that's, this sounds bad, but it's not bad. You got a road dog story. I mean, I do, but, uh, <laughs> about being kind of a young guy being a little douche. Oh, being a doucher. And he's in the background. He's like, don't record me. Don't put me in this video. But that's all I'm going to say about that. But, um, um, but road dog, like a guy who just like, almost like a Jake, the snake Roberts, like they're, they're move lists. And like, everybody talks shit about John Cena for the same thing. It's like, you do five moves. It's like, who gives a fuck? Yeah. You're still watching. It's story, bro. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. fucking road dog knows how to, he's from a fucking wrestling family that everyone forgets exactly. the Armstrongs, man. Yeah. Come on. So he is a fucking, what a second generation wrestler. Was he's, his dad stretch Armstrong though? No, not oh, stretch that was a rumor. No, not stretch. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, even his, even like his brothers were like referees or wrestlers, like Brad Armstrong worked for WCW and then transitioned to be a referee. Like yeah. these guys, like he's been in the business for a fucking long time. And like these guys who will take young guys and especially like guys who are just breaking in, um, and take their ideas and place them right. so that the picture works. And then the, the whole story of, or the short story of the match if you want to call it that will make fucking sense. So, um, uh, that's another job that like, if WWE ever was like, Hey man, we might not want to hire you as a wrestler, but we would love to hire you as an agent. I was like, dream fucking come true. Right. Cause I feel like, I feel like I'm going to say right and right, right now. It, it's not going to work because, no, cause I'm going to want to do it. No, because it's going to be like <laughs> fucking hundred percent. You're going to have to be on the road all the time. And you're literally going right. to probably be like, hey, X, man, I'm not here at all. You know, and that's where your situation is different than uh, everybody. Just like everybody's situation is different. Everybody has their own type of life. Well, everyone that you, you have can a son, think. But everyone you have can... to be like, hey, bud, I'm going to have to do this. And it's going to suck. Right. You know what I mean? So that that's where your situation is different. Now, I think. If, if well, all those wrestlers be, are making that sacrifice too. I mean, Colby and Becky are doing the same thing. They also have they like have an RV or something with their kid and them, and they're they're traveling. Together. You think I wouldn't be able to do something like that? I don't think you'd have uh, the means to have an RV with your kid. I think I could get a <laughs> rental car and have my son with me. I mean, I'm just I'm 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 I'm, I'm not going to sit here and say that you couldn't do it. What I'm saying is, is there's always there's opportunity out there, right, to do something else. That you even you love even more because WWE is not the end all be all. No, no, I was getting at. No, no, no. AEW is what right. I was getting at. So you get what I'm saying. But there, there also AEW's uh, schedule is a lot more lax than WWE's, mm-hmm. which is preferable. I think, I think they do that for a reason. I they do. They realize- I mean, that was how you know Cody and them like wanted to present it, and they also their contracts were structured different that your merchandise is your merchandise. We own like AEW itself owns nothing of like, if you're selling a Cody Rhodes, American nightmare shirt, that is Cody Rhodes. That doesn't say AEW on it. And if it does, I don't think they own any rights of the merchandise of it. Like you get WWE like takes a big percentage of like those guys as merchandise sales. Like a three sixty is what a three sixty deal, right? They call it where they do this in music. Yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people do it, like Lennon said, for the PR, just of having your name out there. But being uh, with a label doesn't necessarily mean mean you're going to be a fucking big band like Pantera or Metallica. Oh no, they also had strings on that. But let's get back to it. So the the Chicago show. All together was a good experience. Oh yeah, saying, and is it something that's going to continue on then? Yes. Um, if even if I'm not actually wrestling, the whole initial idea was that I was going to come on as as like the mouthpiece for these boys, and in the long run, also being a mouthpiece or being a manager, as they say when I say mouthpiece, um, cutting promos for them. I will end up kind of aging their matches and stuff. And some of the mm-hmm. guys like, you know, uh, some of the guys like, I mean, even if you think you're like, great, like if I'm a part of the match, I'm like, dude, you should do this. 
and stretch this part out just a little bit longer to create a moment. And that was what we were talking about too. Me and Brew Baker were like, there are times where you have these moments that you can create instead of just, and like the bad right. thing is like, we were all talking about it, you know, like we were brought up as there's moments, but like with AEW and a lot of these independents, it's just a fucking, it's a fucking grand finale of the, you know, fireworks show, like the entire fucking time you're watching it. It's like, okay, right. cool. But we've, I've had that same, we've talked about that in this podcast of like, you know, that was cool, but I wasn't captivated by the story of that. Yeah. That's true. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Fucking The Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin weren't doing double fucking front flips from the top rope because they didn't fucking have to. They didn't. And just the gift of of the mic yeah. made their character but again, so much bigger. Again, a lot of people yeah. call themselves wrestlers and workers or whatever. Uh, a promo is wrestling. Wrestling is a promo. And the right. way you present yourself with a promo is in my head, I've broken it down the same steps of a match. Mm -hmm. Even as a heel, you cut a promo, you build them up a little bit, then you cut them down. Right. Because you don't want to just like shit on them the entire time. You still want to be like, uh, I'll let this guy get his little shine spot, and then I cut him the fuck down in my right. rest of my promo and why I'm better than him. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I it's that's it's a promo is wrestling, wrestling is promo, and it's got to be treated that way. And guys who can't do both, to me, I'm like, you know how many guys who who have done that in the independent scene or even in Ring of Honor? Um, those guys who could go out there and have like badass matches but couldn't grab a microphone and to save them lives or save their lives to fucking right. cut it. Like you only get so far. That's true. You only get so far until until you just fall flat on your fucking face because you can't grab a microphone and captivate people the same way you can do as an in ring performer. Because you have to be able to do both. And I think that's, well, I mean, Goldberg, I guess. Like, people, people be like, yeah, oh, but that's not true. Cause, uh, uh, no, like Goldberg, his two fucking, say. His two fucking yeah. lines were fucking merchandise selling right, two right, lines. Right, 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 right. I was just giving them. Who's next? That's all he had to fucking exactly. say. And he was also jacked as fuck. Out of his mind jacked, bro. And, you know, give me the steroids, buddy. Oh, fuck. But like, he was a football take... player. That motherfucker was big as shit everything, anyways. Everything was in him. You know everything what I mean? was in him. But he was big as fuck anyway. He was. And I guess, you know, really, especially with that last show, it's really cool. You uh, you summed up exactly what I was looking for, especially with etiquette. Um, there's a lot of people out there that, that are beginning something. And when they begin something, they don't necessarily know who was the precursor to what they did? So you talked about that a little bit about the young bug kind of going, I don't know like who this guy is. Well, the respect was kind of lost because he doesn't know. Yeah. And that's okay. It's not really his fault. No, I, I wasn't. I, I Again, I took no offense of it. I thought it was said that I'm just kind of getting to that right. going. Okay. My, my story in the beginning was uh, as a young buck band, people were like, fucking idiots. Oh, even though Derek's playing, Better get oh, dude, you dude, could ever, you know, seriously, like, you can't play what this guy can physically play. But they were like, oh, those fucking assholes are practicing before the show, and and we're we're going well, yeah, we have to because we were because you want to be perfectionist and you want to be fucking good because yeah, nobody's here, so what the fuck's wrong? I still get in the ring and roll around with so people. That's what I was getting at was a pre etiquette thing, also other than shaking each other's hand. Is to go out to the ring yeah. and just kind of talk to people and get stretched a little no, bit and, it, you know, it, fucking work. And just get, it, getting in the ring with a person and getting the feel of them, not saying locking up or anything, but like getting the feel of the way they move, even if they're just walking around the ring. Right. I'm mean, like, I can kind of feel uh, this is how his movement might be. Um, there's just things just once you get, or even on a stage as, as if you were performing, right. um, once you're in the ring with whoever you're going to perform with and you start to like, you know, uh, back and forth ideas, um, being in the ring together, you're like, well, how about we do this? And then you kind of just, you know, go through the motions. I'm not saying you take the fucking bumps by any means, but like you go through the motions of how that spot would work and yeah. how you would get there and why it would make sense. And like that stuff 
sometimes is lost. Like I said, like there are people who are just busy bodies to be busy bodies. Like William Regal would shit. I guarantee if William Regal was in the, in the, when he's in the back watching a lot of those AEW matches, he's like, wow. Yeah. You know, cause like William Regal, I still haven't watched an AEW. Well, show William Regal, really to. Uh-huh, he, William, Re- R- William Regal was all about waste, no wasted movement. Everything you do means something to the next His thing. Facial, uh, what do you call that? Facial expressions, amazing. Yeah, they're fantastic. That guy pissed me off with his face. Oh, and he then when he was like, doing the blue blood thing, like, yeah, like, what stinks in here? <laughs> yeah, dude, so good. Oh, dude, it was so fucking was great. The people, the people, fucking stink. But you know who else? Because wrestling fans back then, especially in the nineties. Bro, you beer ridden. F- <laughs> they still stink. Just and, saying. Hey, deodorant. Nothing changes Go when ahead. you when you get fucking a hundred plus more in a fucking room and it's hot. People are gonna start to stink. And again, especially with metal shows, that's what you love about it in a right. weird way. You love the stink yeah. of the crowd. It's weird. I don't because you know they're actually it, fucking moving too. They're moving, uh, especially in a good show. Yeah, and you know that they're fucking there to really be in the moment. Yeah, and by the way, pro wrestling fans are there to be in the moment, and this is one. There's two real pure forms of things. I should, you know, I'll, music is all encompassing because, in a sense, um, pro wrestling is music. Uh, and yes, I've, I've, I've I've tried to say this before. But the best way to think about it is uh, when you go to see a music show, you're basically you're you're, you're seeing a story uh, from people that you don't know, and it's just in a different form. But it's very close to pro wrestling. Oh, it is. And a lot of those lyrics that like, well, even if you're doing a, a like a, you know, a comedic joke band with like joke yeah. lyrics, you're still progressing the image of what your story is. Do you know what I mean? Like True. Pit Lord, Pit Lord still progresses their story with the smoke, the grill smoking and them in their aprons and like the lyrics and everything. Yep. The story's fucking being told right there in front of you. And oh, then yeah. with lyrics, it's, it's there. Yeah. Stories keep you good stories. That's why I, I explained to uh, the students or anybody who's breaking the business. Cause like when I was a part of the first two classes of black and the brave, it's like, well, just watch wrestling, watch wrestling, watch wrestling, watch wrestling. I was like, no, you don't have to only watch wrestling. Yes, please do, because you're trying to learn that. But watch the progression progression of one season of a television show. And yeah. if they don't captivate yep. you, you're ask not going to continue to fucking ask watch. Why. You're not going to continue to well, fucking watch. At least ask why. Well, yeah. why, did, why did they do that? Oh, it was because this character kind of just came in, who cared, and blah, blah. And, the, and and especially with like early the attitude area. Hey, um, my favorite fucking show, character development. One of my favorite yeah. shows, it's Stranger Things. Character de- and it, dude. Again, I can fucking go off about that. Like character development in that show. And yes, they have their downs of like, well, that was kind of boring. But they always bring it up. There's always a crescendo to the fucking finish. And that's a reason it has become a worldwide phenomenon because they are writing a fucking good show. Yeah. And I I feel like um, probably the last movie that did that was actually Prey. Prey was great. I loved it, dude. That I seen uh, where I was like, made sense. Although, um, you know, again, not to be sounding there's, sexist. There's serp- it's like a woman, that, yeah. But yeah. you have to remember in the books, women are also all over aliens and Predator in the books. So. Y- you haven't played um, the Predator video game. Uh, but, uh, buddy but, had it, but, but yeah. there are female Predators in the video game. And uh, Dutch, which is actually voiced. It's these tapes you can find throughout By playing Arnold. the game. Yeah. yeah, he talks about how he had his first encounter with a female predator, and she almost killed him. And in in the game, that's he's, the movie they didn't have to make. Yeah, so, and uh, in the game, he's got a scar from where she did like the throw of the web that was used in oh, Prey. Man, and he cut it off, but it left a scar on him. Fucking uh, Cyrax. Yeah, wow. yeah, it is or a Cyrax thing. Cyrax. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Plug some stuff. Uh, okay, so we're doing wrestling with music and life dot com. Uh, it'll be up here within the month. Um, I want to say though, that doing that 
it just drives away so that you guys could actually see that we're, you know, legit. Uh, and we've been legit. We're humans, whatever. But I just mean a, a direction, a, a point that you can go to and uh, possibly shit on us. Do whatever you want to do there. I want that. And I want also to um, have the, the amount of, you know, I, I just want to have people come on that really want to be on. Um, Suge's going to, you know, obviously have more people come on. And uh, right now, uh, especially for me, I'm, I'm making my uh, solo project known. Titanium Utopia will probably debut here within two weeks. Um, I'm working yeah, okay. on the website. The song that I'm doing is a solo project. And it, it has, you know, metal. It's metal. Um, and if you guys are cool with that, I'm fucking ready. Uh, nine twenty four. Um, we're in Wildwood, which is awesome. I haven't performed there in a bit because of you know, I mean, just the scheduling and stuff. Like, uh, war. We just haven't had an SCW show there. So the very next day after that is a Sunday where I end up wrestling. Like, I can't say how many times, but. I'm wrestling. Uh, it's a tournament. So it's the Quad City Music Festival. Um, and I think it's over at Beer Stube. I, that, that's all I'm seeing. But uh, I don't think it's Beer Stube. But I'll have to find out the exact date. Um, just follow SCW on Twitter. I put or, it up the last episode. Um, yeah. I believe you're right. Beer Stube. Yeah. So. Yeah, and then that, again, after that, it would be uh, October 8th in Walcott. So, uh, yeah, those are the dates, man. Like, um, for now, I, I'm not going to jump the gun. I mean, I have a whole fucking year's worth of uh, SCW shows, but that's Hell not, yeah. that's not, but. Uh, but that's not all my dates. Right. Because I'm just going to start picking up some fucking more, my friend. Stroke um, Project, right? Uh, yeah, Stroke Project, and there's another company I used to work for that's yeah. running again as well as Dreamwave Wrestling. And they are out of LaSalle, Illinois, and I always have a great time there. Well, hell yeah. I just want to say, obviously, uh, every week we're trying to put out content for you guys. We're trying to make it to where you understand that we're we're just giving you what life is giving us, you know? And, and he talked about his show a lot today, and it was great. And I'm going to let you know he's going to continue to have shows. I'm hoping in my future, um, it sounds like there's a seed that has been planted for a band that I've been in before, which I put over. It's called Dark Rift. Um, we've always just needed a drummer, and uh, a drummer said, hey, brothers, we're going to do this, sisters. Either way, the point is we uh, we are trying to do something and uh, that's going to make my life much more ah full is to have a show in front of you fellows and sisters so i want to say shout out to people that are keeping watching and commenting down below and liking and subscribing and i want to say hey you guys have been the best and drink or think or, or just drink both. <laughs> Fuck it. Drink and think. Fuck it.